Hi everybody, Will Cleaver here. Before we go into the interview on open source electronics with Jeremy Blum, I'd like to talk for one minute on open source ecology. Uh, if you don't know what open source ecology is, please look at Martin Jakubowski's 2011 TED Talk and the GVCS Global Village Construction Set videos on my YouTube channel here. Uh, I've been collaborating with Open Source Ecology since 2009 with various different CAD drawings and I spent six months at Factory Farm in Missouri in 2010 uh, further developing Lifetrack 2 and Powercube 2 and then fabricating and building them. Um, I'm now back in Europe looking at starting up a similar project here. I've been looking at land in Portugal and Spain as land is much cheaper there and I've been looking at funding it through my own work. However, I see there's a lot of interest in um, on the Open Source Ecology Wiki uh, from people from other people looking at doing something similar. So before I go ahead with anything, I think it'd be great if we all got together on a Skype conference call or something similar and discussed uh, our individual ideas. Um, so without further ado, here's a very interesting interview on open source electronics with Jeremy Blum. Good to go. Okay, so here we are in London with Jeremy Blum. Um, would you like to uh, mention your websites, Jeremy? Uh, sure. So, I'm Jeremy. I do uh, a lot of open source hardware and electronics work and instructional videos. So, mostly I, I focus on YouTube videos. I, I have a channel, youtube.com slash 14 but everything also goes up on my blog, which is jeremyblum.com. Uh, I do guest blogs for Element 14, which is an electronics user community, uh, independent blogs on my own site. Yeah. Along those lines, mostly instructional stuff. I always publish all my materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've just talked for ten minutes about open source ecology and what's going on in Missouri and plans for a open source ecology style open source technology um, project here in Europe. And we're interested in knowing. Um, what websites we should keep an eye on for the latest developments in open source electronics so we can keep up to date um, with the electronics for our open source hardware projects. Um, could you give us some insight on what websites we should, yeah, so we should I, stay I focused think on? There's, there's a whole bunch that you should keep an eye on. Um, I mentioned before adafruit.com. Uh, definitely look out for that. The person in, in charge of that, her name is Lenore Freed. She was actually on the cover of Wired magazine uh, in April. They do amazing stuff, all open source kits. Um, she's very helpful, they publish tutorials, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Sparkfun.com, it's a company based out of Colorado. They do, they sell, um, they take chips that for hobbyists or people doing small scale work are usually hard to work with and make breakout boards for them so it's easier for people to utilize them. Uh, Compasses, GPS modules, accelerometers, all that stuff. Uh, and most of their stuff is open source too. Uh, they also have a blog on there where they talk about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Bug Labs, which I also mentioned, um, out of New York City, they do a fair amount of open source work. All their main product is open source, but they're also a big pusher in the open source movement, hardware movement. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say keep an eye on MakerBot. Uh, 3D printing, I think, is highly significant for open source ecology. Uh, and, and if you think about kind of how printers and photocopiers and stuff worked initially, where initial people really couldn't afford to have their own first, and then you go to a print shop down the street to print something or photocopy something, and then eventually move to your home, and you can buy a printer now for 50 bucks. I imagine similar things will happen with 3D printing several years in the future, at least I hope they will. So I think they're an important company to keep looking at. Um, Along the same lines as MakerBot is Fab at Home, which is another open source 3D printer. Um, that, that one's based out of Cornell University. They do they collaborate with each other sometimes. And Fab at Home is interesting because uh, it's it's kind of killer app they call it is printing food. Um, so you, you kind of input raw components and it'll print out edible food, um, which is fun uh, and, and very interesting. Um, what else? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, those, those are the big ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And as far as yourself, what's your, um, uh, what, what is it you um, 
advanced in the field and what is it you're looking to, to push in the open source electronics so, field? Mostly what I've been, I, I do a lot of work with the Arduino, which is an open source microcontroller platform and I think you can keep an eye on actually. Um, I do work with all sorts of microcontrollers and electronics uh, and what I try to push is getting people involved in open source electronics development, um, giving them the tools and instructions they need to kind of get their feet wet. Um, electronics work and development of projects and platforms isn't really that hard once you get the basics down. So I make instructional videos and blogs and tutorials and I post source code and schematics and all that stuff. Uh, to help people get the basic tools they need to understand how the technology works, I think, and then take the code, expand on it, run with it, and develop it into their own projects or doing useful things. And that's all posted on your, your website? Yeah, that's all on my website, jeremyblum.com. Okay. Um, yeah, tutorials, everything is on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as far as um, the open source ecology um, side of things, how, how would you see uh, uh, this open source electronics being able to integrate into uh, open source ecology. To give an example, we're interested in open sourcing our electronics, for example, to be able to build uh, our own welder um, for our workshop. Um, how hard is it, or how much effort would have to go into open sourcing the electronics for such a machine? I mean, the act of actually open sourcing it is easy. You just, you know, you have the schematics, you publish them, yeah. it's open source, uh, and then you, you, you should pick a license. Obviously, I usually use Creative Commons or GNU public license or the new open source hardware license that the first draft was released in the Open Source Hardware Summit recently. Um, and so the act of open sourcing it is easy, yeah. but the tough part is getting people the materials they need to actually produce it. Um, yeah. So one way to do it is you can, let's say you design a printed circuit board, People have, someone has to get that circuit board printed. So you can either send it out to a company to get it printed, which can range anywhere from $10 to $500 to get a circuit board printed professionally, mm -hmm. um, or you can make it yourself. Um, and to make it yourself, you basically need a bunch of chemicals, um, some special lights uh, to use with photoresist, uh, and it's not actually that hard for simpler circuit boards. Uh, for advanced stuff, it gets more complicated, but you can make a single layer circuit board in about a half hour, um, ready to have stuff soldered into it. Uh, okay. I think it's like three chemicals, some photoresist, the actual board, and a special like UV light, okay. uh, and, and a, laser, a laser printer to print out the design, but you can also do it with Sharpie. Right, right, okay. Um, you mentioned the Open Source Hardware Summit, uh, which is an annu annual event in New York um, in September. Um, I think it's September. Yeah. September, you mentioned, yeah. Um, and you mentioned they're working on a license for open source hardware. Right. Now, so far in open source ecology, our, our way of <coughs> kind of, uh, we, we publish regularly or publish far and wide. So there's evidence on the web that we've developed the concepts, you know, from when they've been developed. And that's been our, our kind of way of. Um, we haven't had any problems yet with people patenting things and so on, but with licenses, shall we say. Um, do, do you know what the license is that they're working on developing for hardware? Yeah, so with hardware, you have different considerations than open sourcing software. So if you consider, uh, a, good, a good example is Adafruit, because uh, they make open source hardware kits. They, they publish everything you need to make them yourself. Um, because they're published open source, there's nothing to stop someone else from taking the design files, um, building either, you know, making their own kits or building finished products and then selling them. Uh, and through, you know, factors of you know, economies of scale, out uh, better, offering it at better prices than the original creator of the work, um, or kind of making copies that people then get confused with the original, that kind of thing. Um, so the open source hardware license focuses on allowing you to license things open source while ensuring that you um, retain all the, not necessarily the ownership rights because it's, it's open source, but making sure that other people can't screw you over basically yeah. is the idea. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And you know, there's different ways you can use just like with different uh, software licenses that exist now. You can, you can choose to use it however you want. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in my opinion, the, the most important thing uh, 
the Creative Commons license, for example, which people commonly use for this sort of thing, uh, is the share alike clause in the license, which is, you know, you can take this, you can do whatever you want with it, you can specify whether or not you want it to be used commercially or not. Um, but the most important thing is if you make improvements to it or change it, you have to repost them. You have to share the changes so that people can benefit from them if you think they're useful. Uh, and I think that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Jeremy Blum, thank you very much. Would you like to plug your websites one more time? JeremyBlum.com. You can just Google Jeremy Blum first result. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh -huh.